Okay, girls. Um, now we will uh, study with the protein classification. We had uh, study the different uh, levels of protein structure. Okay, those four levels of different uh, four levels of protein structure. Now we come to the classification. So, if you see, protein can be classified in many ways. Okay, because in some books you will find that proteins are classified only as simple proteins and conjugated proteins and some they give these uh, some books they refer to these uh, four class four different types of classification so proteins because they are the diverse group of uh, biomolecules which perform a uh, different varieties of functions so their classification also is based on different uh, aspects so we can see here the first one protein they can be classified based on functions now this one I'm not going to repeat again because this I had already explained in my first video of this chapter protein okay so you can refer to that video where I had mentioned all these uh, based on functions we have different types of proteins so uh, based on their functions, we see that uh, proteins, they can be classified into uh, many class, okay, like enzyme proteins, structural protein, storage proteins, then hormones, immunoglobulins, transport, motor proteins, receptor protein, signal proteins, and toxic proteins. So, these different classes I had already uh, explained in detail. In the first video itself so now I'm going to continue with other type of classification now the second type of classification is based on post translational modification this one actually the post translational modification is because uh, the process of synthesis of proteins is translation this you will study in uh, in your sixth semester, you will come across this translation. Translation is the process of protein synthesis, okay, from the DNA molecule. Now, post-translational modification, it means that the proteins, after, the, after their synthesis, okay, after the proteins has been synthesized, they will get modified, okay? So, the, that is the meaning of post-translational modification. So, Different proteins, after they have been synthesized, they will get uh, modified into, in order to perform different functions. Okay, so here the first one, based on this modification, we have different types of proteins. Now, the first one is the native protein. So, from the name itself, why, they, why these proteins, they are called native? Because after they have been synthesized or they have been translated, in the cell they remain as it is okay a protein that retain the same amino acid sequence as transcribed after it has been synthesized it remains as it is no other modification is required so those type of proteins they fall under this category the native proteins now conjugated proteins as you have studied about car carbohydrates we have conjugated glycans so here also conjugated proteins it means those proteins which are modified after translation by forming a covalent linkage with other molecules or the biomolecules such as carbohydrates and lipids those proteins which are uh, which have a covalent linkage with carbohydrates are known as proteoglycans and those with lipids are known as lipoproteins so those fall under this class and we have complex proteins now complex protein is when a functional protein is a multimeric aggregation of several units for example if you remember uh, i'll just give you an example of a, a hemoglobin a hemoglobin it is a hetero hetero why because it has two different types of uh, two different types of polypeptide chains okay and they are four in number so it is hetero tetrameric 
Now, those type of proteins, they are referred to as complex proteins. They are made up of many uh, polypeptide units, okay? And we have cleaved proteins. Now, when a primary transcript, that is the protein which has been synthesized, is a much longer chain, okay? Suppose this, this uh, is a much longer chain of amino acids. Suppose this is the protein which has been synthesized a very long a very long chain of protein molecule a very long polypeptide chain has been synthesized by the cell okay but in order to perform a specific function this protein it has to be cleaved some of the some of the, uh, its parts has to be cleaved in order for it to function so those proteins which uh, in which in order to function, okay, a functional protein is formed by cleaving of some segments. Those fall under this category. Then we have polyproteins. Now, when a single long, uh, long chain, long polypeptide chain of a protein is spliced into several functional protein unit suppose this long protein this long polypeptide chain suppose it is spliced okay it is cut off into the and these small segments they are still functional so such protein they are referred to as polyproteins poly means many because just from this a single long transcript okay long uh, polypeptide chain which has been transcribed we get many proteins which are functional. So those type of proteins, they are referred to as polyproteins. And we have mi misfolded proteins. So misfolded proteins which get misfolded and suppose they should fall in this way. Suppose they should fall, fall on this way but they get misfolded in other way. Okay. And therefore, since they get misfolded, in a different way so they fail to perform the normal function those type of proteins are referred to as misfolded proteins okay because if they fall in a right way they will perform function but sometimes they get misfolded in a wrong way so they cannot perform any function so those proteins they fall under this category okay now we come to the third classification that is which is based on location of proteins so based on where they are located they are classified into four groups that is the membrane protein the intracellular proteins which are present in between the cells the extracellular proteins and also the virus protein so this classification it is based on its on the location of the proteins now coming to the fourth type of classification that is the present day classification now proteins they are classified okay uh, this classification it involves most of the criteria as used in earlier classification okay and this present day classification it divides the proteins into two main types okay based on the structural basis now we have the fiber proteins and the spherical proteins fiber proteins it, it, it is further divided into two types that is cytoskeletal proteins here we have proteins such as uh, example is tubulin then keratin also it falls on the disc category and we have myosin, then kinesin, okay, and many other. Okay, so fiber proteins, okay, which fall under these two categories, this group, it includes all those proteins which assemble to form fiber, okay, which assemble to form a fiber or uh, fiber-like structures such as uh, spindle fibers then silk fibers muscle fibers okay all these they fall under this category however the structure of the unit protein it may even be globular 
single polypeptide chain, a single protein molecule, it may be globular. But these globular proteins, they assemble together. Okay. They can, for example, in tubulin, okay, in tubulin, it is actually, it is a globular protein. But a large number of tubulin molecules assemble together, they form a they form a microtubules okay they form microtubules just like uh, they will assemble together in the form of a fiber fiber like structures so the group it includes a large number this group it includes a large number of proteins which form the cytoskeleton okay which form the cytoskeleton and also which form the extracellular matrix so that is why we have two types cytoskeletal proteins and extracellular matrix proteins and here the important proteins in this class that is the extracellular matrix proteins it includes like uh, those proteins like collagen okay these are some of the example then we have elastin then we have agrican and so many other okay so these are the three examples of extracellular matrix protein now coming to the second type of classification here we have the uh, spherical proteins now these proteins spherical proteins they are either spherical or oval in shape although sometimes they may look like a rod Okay, they may look like a rod, but the length breadth ratio is usually less than 10. So they are they are oval or spherical in shape and they may have one or more chains in alpha helices, beta pleated sheets, or a mixture of both alpha helix and beta pleated sheets. Okay. And here actually why these uh, proteins they are classified under this category because these proteins they fold it in such a way because i had already mentioned when we discuss about the structure of protein the different levels that in order for a protein to function it is not present in a straight chain like this straight chain of amino acid in order for this polypeptide chain or a protein to function it must be folded into its tertiary or quaternary structure so it should fold so in order for the protein to function here in this case spherical proteins they fold it in such a way so that the hydrophobic R groups they are pushed to the interior for example this long polypeptide chain it will fold in such a way all right in any way it will fold so that all these inside these amino acids inside they are all hydrophobic hydrophobic so they are pushed inside and these amino acids which are present here on the they are hydrophilic groups okay that means the hydrophilic groups they remain on the surface why so that they can survive in the aqueous environment of the cell okay and all global globular or spherical proteins they are therefore water soluble and here they are further classified into these different classes we have so many for example uh, proteins which act as enzymes for example lysozyme and hexokinase and we have those proteins which are hormone proteins for example oxytocin and insulin and we have membrane proteins we have storage proteins then defense proteins which takes part in the defense mechanism of the body then we have cell adhesion proteins receptor proteins plasma proteins nucleoproteins toxic proteins such as snake venom and also we have regulatory proteins Okay, which regulate the different functions inside the cell now these are the different 
proteins which fall on the this category okay and they are called so because of their globular structure now coming to the last topic of this chapter that is functions okay it is not mentioned but still you need to know the some of the important functions of proteins it is not mentioned in the syllabus it is mentioning only the classification and the structure but then uh, it is important for you to know some of the important functions of proteins we can see the first one is they act as structural proteins or structural molecule now the proteins of the extracellular matrix for example uh, collagen then we have elastin okay all these proteins they provide a definite shape for example keratin then fibroid etc all these they make hairs nails etc which protect our body and uh, the histones ribosomal proteins and membrane proteins they organize the the intracellular structure so these they fall on the this or uh, on the this function those type of proteins they are referred to as the structural proteins now we have uh, other types of proteins which act as enzymes okay enzymatic activity of proteins which function as enzymes so these proteins they function as enzymes and we know that enzymes they are those molecules which involve in the catal in the catalysis of most biochemical reactions okay in order to keep the organism alive so they perform the function of enzymes okay to catalyze different biochemical reactions in the body in the cell and we have uh, the next very important function of proteins is defense okay here the proteins they act as immunoglobulins okay which make our immune system and they protect our body from any undesirable invaders from foreign materials which invade the body and also the example snake venom is also and other toxic proteins also these they serve as a mean of defense okay so the production the snake venom and all and other toxic proteins these also they act as they serve as a means of uh, defense okay and we have another important function that is transport so the proteins under this category they serve as transporter of hormones then electrons and a number of transmembrane proteins transporting all the biomolecules across the cell membrane so those proteins are termed as transport proteins and another important function we have movement for example here the muscle proteins okay example myosin it is a muscle protein and also others several others they are involved in movement so they their function is in movement okay for example myosin by expansion or contraction of the muscle it makes the organs move while another example that is dianin dianin and then kinesin etc these protein molecules they help they function in intracellular movements okay the movements between the cells intracellular movement and we have another important function is signaling molecules these proteins they help to transfer the the signal they carry the signal okay they carry the signal for gene expression for the expression of a gene so they carry the signal from one cell to another cell they act as some of these they act as as hormones okay for example insulin glucagon 
and they carry the signals for gene expression and also a number of receptor proteins are also involved in signaling mechanism so these are some of the important functions but not only these I had discussed uh, when we talk about these protein classification which is based uh, on the functions we have studied there are so many functions of proteins here okay so these are some some of the very important uh, functions only which I had mentioned here these are the six main important or uh, very important functions of proteins